Mm. So with that being said, let's get into this match to see what these players can do. I am so excited about this match considering how it all went down in the last Players Cup here. So Reggie, Alecki, and Whimsicott coming out here against the Incineroar and the Thunderous. Incineroar is interesting. I think it's probably Wolfie's best option to deny that turn one Tailwind. We actually got a sneak peek of that Whimsicott set, and I believe it actually has that eject button. So that's going to definitely be a little bit cheeky here. And oh, Cheesock's considering the Dynamax Reggie Alecki. There's that helping hand on the Whimsicott as well. Uh, the helping hand actually has higher priority than fake out. So if you go for this option and Incineroar indeed goes for a fake out onto Alecki, uh, you get a lot of damage off with Max Lightning into the opposing Thunderous. Right. <laughs> Dynamax, Reggie, Alecky, not something that you always see, but this Pokemon does so much damage and is so fast that it can definitely catch people off guard. I'm really excited to <laughs> to see how Wolf responds to this here. Play Dynamax, Reggie, Alecky, turn one is always like the thing I'm most shocked by. And g Slug's actually put himself in such a good position to actually you know, do a lot of work with it. And it actually makes a lot of sense, right? The only thing on Wolfie's team that resists electric type attacks is gonna be that Venusaur. No Venusaur out here to start. So why not just go for a burst of damage and get that uh, terrain up as well? Max Thunderous coming out on Wolf's side here. And let's see what that Incineroar goes for. No, f um, sorry, the Helping Hand from the Whimsicott onto the Regieleki, and the Incineroar did go, in fact, go for that fake out, not being as high as a priority. Isn't going to do anything except for switching that Whimsicott out with that Eject button here. Yeah, and I'm curious, I think, you know, typically in a scenario like this, you want to double up onto the Whimsicott, go with something like Fake Out and Max Airstream. Uh, and this is a really cool way in dealing with Assault Vest Thunderous, right? Max Lightning here actually does a sizable amount. Now you've also set up that ter uh, electric terrain. So another Max Lightning will KO the Thunderous from the opposing side. And so it's a really unique game plan here. You don't see it very often. It's going to be Max Airstream coming out from Wolfie's side of the field. But here's the thing about Aleki, uh, Reggie Aleki, I should say. It is so fast that... You can still outspeed the Incineroar and Thunderous even after they get a speed boost here. So, you know, a lot of Thunderouses are Assault Vests. If we don't see a Life Orb here, I think it's fair to assume that it is Assault Vest. There is no Life Orb there. And so now Cheesock's in a really interesting position where you can just go for a Max Lightning onto Thunderous and a close combat into Incineroar. I have no idea what Wolfie's counterplay to that is other than maybe switching Incineroar to a Venusaur if you have in the back. Something that can resist. But, uh, you know, Zacian is also something that's likely waiting in the back. Uh, it really comes down to, yeah, what two Pokemon Wolfie has in the back. But I think Cheesock's G-Suck, really good game plan here. Uh, you know, getting that free switch into Urshifu. Urshifu with one HP is still infinitely more than zero HP. You get that max lightning <laughs> into Thunderous. If this Regieleki is max speed, I think it should outspeed the opposing Thunderous. And so uh, I, I love the kind of the creativity uh, that Cheesaw came in with this game plan. Because I think if you look at his team, you would definitely not expect Regieleki to be the first or even second Dynamax option. Regieleki truly going first here and picking up that KO on the Thunderous here. That's a, that's a big KO here. Reggie, even after an Airstream, Reggie like he's just so fast. Close combat from the Urshifu oh. is going to pick up that KO on the Incineroar. And G-Sock has such a big Pokemon lead already on turn two of this match here. I was wondering if Incineroar had any speed investment where after a speed boost from that Thunderous you get outspeed. Because that's actually really critical, right? Imagine that uh, it outspeeds the Urshifu, gets the KO onto it, then you preserve. <laughs> and Stone Jenner is actually out with that Zacian. But uh, part of the problem here, Sierra, is that there is no electric resist, right? So once again, you can see how smart she sucks decision actually Dynamax's Regieleki was. And What's tough is, you know, you can protect to stall out the, or take a little bit of less damage from the Dynamax, but Urshifu doesn't care about the protects. It can just freely target through. Stone Journer is cool, but Stone Journer typically is designed to support its teammates. It's not really going to carry the game very much, right? So uh, I think here Stone Journer can go for a rock side, maybe just try to pick up the KO onto Urshifu. Uh, I think the protect play on uh, Wolfie's side here is absolutely correct, but it's still tough, right? She starts doubling up into that. You still take so much damage from this double up. Uh, Max Lightning alone, yeah, would have picked up the KO without the protect, but then close combat here is still going to bring Zacian down to very low HP. All right, connecting onto that Zacian, bringing it real close, not quite picking up that KO there. 
and Stone Joiner is just going to go for the Rock Slide. Finally, connects with that Urshifu, of course, with 1 HP, will pick up that KO, and just a bit of chip on this Reggie Alecki here. Yeah, a little bit of chip at the end. Reggie Alecki actually wasn't even in any danger of getting knocked out because while it's really frail, you know, you're, you're not going to take damage if you're able to just knock out your opponent's Pokemon before they can move, and so... Uh, I mean, I think g -Slug definitely baited the uh, Fake Out and Max Airstream into Whimsicott on turn 1, and I, I that's the tough thing about using Assault Vest Thunderous in this format. If your opponent is able to basically get a 2-hit KO onto it, right? Because Assault Vest Thunderous obviously can't go for a Protector and Max Guard. So, I, I think this game is pretty much all but a wrap at this point. Uh, you know, g -Slug can just go for something like a safe Thunderbolt onto the Zacian slot. Uh, Stone Jr. is a cool Pokemon, but, you know, definitely not going to be able to finish it off uh, by itself here. The only thing you want to watch out for is a potential wide guard from Stone Jr. So, don't go for double spread type attacks, right? I think the one way g -Slug could lose this game is if he went for Electro Web and Astro Barrage. As long as you target Zacian with one of the Pokemon with the non-spread move like this much shot you should ensure the game and there's that wide guard yeah sure enough wide guard coming out there was that electro web from the reggie alecki but she saw surely recognizing the wide guard pressure did go for that mud shot on that calyrex and is going to connect and pick up the ko on that station leaving this stone drinner as cool it is like as cool as it is all by itself out on the field and not going to be able to do too much here yeah, you know, Stone Journer, very fun Pokemon, but it's typically not the number one option, right? The whole point is to use it to enable the rest of its partners and, you know, get a little bit of chip damage with Rock Slide. But this was the Dynamax Regieleki game. I have actually never seen a Regieleki put in as much work as I just did in this first game. And it really started from that turn one. I mean, brilliant play by Chisok to position himself so well and basically make uh, the Assault Vest Thunderous on Wolfie's side not nearly as effective. And yeah, in the end, uh, Tailwind wasn't even super relevant because turns out you don't need Tailwind if you're Reggie Alecki, just outspeeds everything to begin with. That Stone Drenner hanging around, look cute on the field for just one more turn here. <laughs> As you said, that Max Reggie Alecki at the beginning of the game was just so strong and just put Chief Buck in such a strong position to sweep through Wolf's team here. Reggie Alecki picking up that final KO here and we're going to be going to a game two, which I'm really excited to see how the players adjust. I mean, Max Reggie Alecki, I'm sure caught Wolf by surprise, but now that he knows that there is that potential, how does he adjust going forward into this game too to counteract it? I think part of the problem for Wolfie in the last game was the lack of any resist to electric type Pokemon. Right, there was no Venusaur, and that's that's the main thing I was looking at going into this matchup. Now, I totally don't fault Wolfie for not bringing that Venusaur in game one because uh, Chisok has that Thunderous on his team, right? So, it once again, that's why the lead matchup is so important, and Chisok made the most out of the lead matchup in the last game, which was already decent for him, uh, and then it snowballed it even faster after that turn one. So, from Wolfie's side of the field, I think if you're expecting Chisok to play with the same Regieleki strategy, you perhaps consider that Venusaur uh, either in the back or lead it, right? If you have it in the back, you can at least switch into a max lightning although that still doesn't feel too good to be honest because you still take a sizable amount Venusaur's uh you know special bulk and just general bulk isn't amazing especially when going up against powerful max moves even if you resist them and so I'm thinking maybe the adjustment if you're expecting the Whimsicott plus the Regieleki combination is to just go with that Venusaur again Chisok can one-up that by leading the Thunderous this time instead of the Regieleki so uh, those are the adjustments I think both players can potentially make going into this next game all right, let's get started into this game too to see what adjustments they are going to be bringing here. So on Wolf's side, with that Venusaur to start next to that Torkoal, so big lead adjustment on Chisok's side, we are going to see the Reggie Alecki next to the Whimsicott again. And I'm really excited about this lead adjustment here. Yeah, I think it's absolutely the right lead adjustment. Uh, you know, Chisok, like I mentioned, could have let that Thunderous, but feeling content to just go with Regieleki, actually considering maxing Regieleki anyway, <laughs> which is, I think, super fascinating here. I mean, what's also tricky from Wolfie's side is, you know, this is an open team sheet tournament. He knows this Whimsicott has Switcheroo and that Eject button. So, you know, he might be really nervous of Dynamaxing Venusaur on turn one, because you don't want to max it just to get Switcheroo and then have Regieleki target it. So, Chisok here actually, you know, deciding I'm just going to Dynamax Regieleki anyway. I don't care that your Venusaur is out on the field because, hey, now that Venusaur is out on the field, that means everything else that is either in the back or, you know, that Torkoal slot can't actually take these electric type attacks. Well, uh, Torkoal doesn't protect here at turn one. Venusaur can't get like a one hit KO onto Regieleki. It's just going to knock out the Torkoal with no problem. 
right? So no protect coming out. That Whimsicott is going to be setting up the Tailwind. So a super speedy Pokemon is just going to be zooming even faster with that Max Lightning onto the Torkoal and just going for those KOs. I mean, Regieleki is so strong. These Max Lightnings just carrying it through the team here and that Torkoal just getting KO'd. Venusaur with the Sludge Bomb out onto the Whimsicott is also going to be picking up a KO here, but Whimscott has already set up that Tailwind. There won't be any more eject button pressure, which I feel would be really, really nice. You have to respect that a little bit, but each player taking a early KO, and I'm excited to see where this goes. Yeah, I think it's really critical Tailwind goes up this time around, right? This game definitely looking a little bit different than the last one, but uh, when we were talking about this matchup in general, one thing I mentioned was the ability to just snowball the game really quickly. Tailwind is a really critical component to that. Shisok not only gets Tailwind up, but also gets a free switch in and sets up the electric train for himself. If this Thunderous doesn't Dynamax, I mean, he'll probably just faint to the Max Lightning. I really like the decision to double up onto Thunderous, knowing that it can't protect in this position. So even if Thunderous maxes, it probably just faints to Max the Lightning plus Wicked Blow. And if Thunderous doesn't Dynamax, well, the Max Lightning picks up the KO onto Thunderous anyway, and then Wicked Blow gets redirected directed into Venusaur. So this is a really safe play, right? Like, because you already have a decent position, why go for any risky plays, right? Especially if you know that the Thunderous here is Assault Vest, it does not have Protect, uh, and with it, you know, being an open team sheet tournament, you fully have uh, information of the opposing side's team. So Wolfie here is going to end up Dynamaxing. It is actually going to be that Gigantamax Venusaur, and you know, I have to wonder, can this Venusaur get a one-hit KO onto that Regieleki with something like a Max Quake, for example? I mean, it's going to have to take care of this Regieleki soon because this Regieleki is applying so much pressure. Max Lightning onto the Thunderous, picking up its second KO in a row here. I mean, this Regieleki is snowballing. Wicked Blow from the Urshifu, taking more than half of the HP away from this Venusaur. No Max Quake. Instead, Vine Lash hitting into that Urshifu. Of course, Focus Sash activating, but with this Vine Lash damage is not going to matter, and this Venusaur is picking up that KO here. Yeah, and the main thing here is Reggie Lucky continues to just stay on the field and not take any damage. I think, you know, that's two turns that Venusaur had an opportunity to target the Reggie Lucky, but I think turn one makes sense, right? You can't fault Wolf for not wanting to Dynamax that Venusaur when you have to face the possibility of uh, an eject button going onto it immediately. Uh, but in the end, Shisok once again saying, hey, now that your Venusaur is out on the field, uh, with Torkoal not protecting Tron, I think that was really critical as well. Just being able to pick up the one hit KO means that this Regieleki is able to snowball the game so much faster. So both players are down to their last two Pokemon. There's still a turn of Max here on the Regieleki. So, you know, you can just go for that Max Lightning onto the Zacian slot. I think Zacian in Wolfie's uh, side of the field will definitely have to protect. If you don't protect, you are just going to absolutely faint to a Max Lightning. So Cheeselot can just play this game very safely. Now, he doesn't have a Psychic type attack on the Calyrex. So, you know, your best bet is to go for that Astral Barrage. I was wondering if, you know, Hyper Beam could actually get the KO onto Venusaur, <laughs> but uh, maybe Astral Barrage alone can finish it off. Either way, I think Wolfie's play here has to be to protect the Zacian. Uh, and then with the Venusaur, you know, yeah, it's a tricky spot. Do you go for the KO onto Calyrex or the Regieleki? I would think to target the Calyrex here. Zacian will go for the Protect, understanding the importance of trying to keep it around. Max Lightning hitting into it, taking one third of the HP with that critical hit as well. Astral Barrage will be dealing a sizable amount of damage to this Venusaur here. Ooh. Not quite the KO though. Fine Lash does get to come out and connecting with that Calyrex is going to face due to his own life form damage here, but getting that Calyrex so close down to zero, it'll surely pick up the KO with the Vine Flash going forward. And we're going to have a 1v1 here with some two super strong Pokemon. Yeah, two strong Pokemon, but in the end, Regieleki has that electric terrain set up. So, uh, you know, all it needs to do, I think, is click Thunderbolt, and I, I think it should just be game over. Now, there actually was that critical hit onto the Zacian. I, I'm not sure Zacian would survive an electric terrain magnet boosted Thunderbolt anyway, but I think that crit basically ensures that Thunderbolt should KO now, you know, just doing a little bit of extra damage through that protect. So, you know, I think Wolfie definitely playing to its outs there, went for the right play that last turn. Thunderbolt comes out, and that's going to be enough for the KO. Picking up that KO, Jisok is going to take this set.
That I think is the best.